الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف Today we are going inshallah to reflect on one of the masterpieces of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is Munajat of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This Munajat along other du'as and Munajats that we have help us to understand how we should talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we should also improve our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are lots of lessons that we can learn from these du'as and munajats. As you know, this was uh, the munajat that Imam used to recite and it's recommended when we go to Masjid Kufa, we also recite this and also in you know, other occasions, of course, we can always read this munajat. Normally people in the month of Ramadan try to recite this munajat. This munajat has, uh, in my understanding, three sections. When I was reflecting on this munajat, which is about three pages, I thought that we can divide it into three parts because there is a structure and the a structure is built in the way that in the first part Imam talks about the worries that he has and everyone should have about the Day of Judgment. So the first part is to establish that we are all going through a very, very difficult experience on the Day of Judgment. The second part is about our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done, what we have done. What He can do and what we can do. And the final section, which is actually very short, which is to make the whole argument complete, comes in the last two lines in which there is a request. So we start with the first part. The first part, as I said, is about the worries that we have with respect to Day of Judgment. Imam Ali Salam brings lots of references from the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-aman yawma la yanfa'u malun wala banun illa man atallaha biqalbin salim. Oh Allah, I ask you protection for the day that nothing is going to help. This was actually part of the dua of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. Hazrat Ibrahim has very beautiful duas and one of his duas is this dua. He said, Oh Allah, please do not humiliate me on the day of resurrection. La tukhzani yawma yub'atun yawma la yanfa'u malun wala banun illa man atallah wa qalbin salim. Please do not disgrace me on the day of resurrection, the day that neither children nor money can help except the person who comes with pure heart. The only thing that can benefit is when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with pure heart, qalb salim. This dua is also answered 
by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah himself in the Quran says about Ibrahim alayhi salam, inna man shi'atihi la Ibrahim, one of the Shia of Nuh was Ibrahim. Ibrahim was a Shia, a follower of Nuh. Inna man shi'atihi la Ibrahim, idh ja'a rabbahu biqalbin salim. He met his Lord while he has pure heart. So his dua is accepted. So his dua was, O oh Allah, let me be protected on the day that neither money nor children can help except if someone comes with pure heart. If someone comes with pure heart, then there is a chance that your money and your children also can help you. Because whatever you have achieved was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's going to help you. If someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has children and looks after children, then it can help him. Even if these children later become bad people, if he has done his best or she has done her best to upbring them Islamically, you will be rewarded. Sometimes people are very worried. They say, you know, we made lots of efforts, but this child is not a good child. Of course, you have to be patient. Many times, gradually, they become very good. But even if for some reason they don't become good, you have not wasted your energy. Anything that you do for the sake of Allah, Allah accepts that. Whether the result that you were expecting comes or not. For example, I make a farm. I make all the efforts. I make a farm, plant trees, look after them so that I can earn halal money or I can give to people as charity. For some reason, the trees don't bear fruits. Your energy is not wasted. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your intention and the efforts. لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى Your efforts are important. أَنَّ السَّعَيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى You would see your efforts. Results are secondary. If you do something rationally, wisely, make proper planning and do efforts, then don't worry about the results. You make the best, for example, majlis. Maybe one person comes, maybe a hundred people come. You have done your best, don't worry. You do proper planning, you prepare everything. Whether people are going to appreciate or not, it's something else. Prophet Noom, Allah Nabi Salam, is a very good example. If Allah want, had wanted to judge him according to his results, he would have very bad results. Because in 950 years, he had only some 80 people who believed in him. So it means that every 12 years on average, he had one person to be guided. So sometimes, you know, I make a joke. I say, if Prophet Nuh was sent by any tabligh organization, they would not have extended his contract. Because I said, you are not making any progress. Every 12 years, just one person. But this is not the way Allah looks at issues. Allah says, Nu has done his best. Whether people appreciate or not, that's between me and those people. I'm going to ask them. I'm going to question them. But I'm not going to criticize Nu. Indeed, I make him one of Ulul Azm. Because he didn't give up. How determined he was, how dedicated he was. For 950 years, he kept preaching people, and he didn't stop even if he was not seeing any result. Who is like Nu that has such determination? So, if you have good intention, pure heart, inshallah, your children, your money, everything that you have done would help you. So, Imam Ali says, I am worried about that day that everything would rely on having qalb salim, having pure Heart. 
the day that people who have done zulm, who have done injustice to people or to themselves, because a sinful is doing zulm to himself, he would start beating his own hand. Sometimes, you know, when you are very sad and you regret about what you have done, then you start beating your hand, your finger. Why I did that? So even the people like Pharaoh, the people who, who had lots of, you know, uh, supporters, soldiers, you know, then you see them when they are in that condition, how humble they become, you know, how much they lose their honor. They do everything. Perhaps you have seen the clip about Saddam Hussein when he was taken. You cannot believe that this was the man that he didn't believe in God at all. He had so much power, so much honor. And then when they took him, it was such a zalil, a <laughs> humbled person. So on that day, day, all these tyrants that have lots of support, power, everything they can decide and they do it, they become so humiliated that they start beating their own fingers and say, why we did this? This is from the Quran. And he would say, I wish I would have taken a path with Rasul. It means I wish I was a companion of Rasul. I was journeying with Rasul. I was following him. Instead of going to the opposite direction, I wish I was taking the same direction as Rasul. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited all of us to be journeying with good people. We want to have our journey along with the people that Allah has bestowed His blessings upon them. Some people don't like to travel with these people. And these are the people that Allah says, Hasuna ulaika rafiqa. These are very good people to travel with. Who would not enjoy traveling with Rasulullah? Nabiyin, shuhada, siddiqin, salihin. These are four categories that Allah has bestowed his ni'mah upon them. And he says, wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa. But unfortunately, some people decide to travel alone or to travel in wrong direction with bad people. So they would say, I wish I would have taken a path with Rasulullah. I would be taking him as my fellow traveler. I ask you protection for the day that the criminals would be known and identified by their face. If your record of bad action is what's just written in a book, you can you know, hide it or you can close the book. You think that no one would understand. But what happens if everything is clear by looking at your face? يُعْرَفُ mujrimun بِسِيمَاهُمْ Looking at the face of people, you would realize that what type of person is this person? Does he have light? Does he have darkness? It's very difficult. Imagine in front of all people, someone appears to be a criminal. May Allah have mercy on us, inshallah. Then they will be taken with their feet, perhaps they will be chained, and also their forehead, the hair of forehead will be taken, that they cannot move, they cannot run. No one can compensate for another person. No one can help another person. 
a father or mother cannot do anything for their children and vice versa. Even Hazrat Nuh cannot do anything for his son. He is a great prophet, but he cannot do anything. Because his son in dunya was not listening. So if my father is a pious person, very close to Allah, but I am a bad person, he cannot do anything for me. Yes, we have this concept that if someone is not too bad, he is not very pious, but he has some basic requirements. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let him join his believing father, for example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who have faith, وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانِ And their children also follow them in Iman, they have Iman. أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ We let their zurriya, their progeny to join, to join them. وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Without reducing their reward. Hadith explains this. It means that on the day of judgment, a pious person is decided to go to heaven. But he would realize his children, his family members are not allowed to go to heaven. They were mu'men, but their actions were not that good. So he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, whatever I have done was for me and my family. Amil to li wa lahum. This is hadith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Okay, now let his family join him without dividing his good actions into the number of his family. We don't reduce his good action. This is rahmah of Allah. And this rahmah comes when there is rahmah among people. If a family of mu'mineen, they love each other, this love on the day of judgment, inshallah, also helps. But if there is no ties of iman, like Nuh and his son, Nuh cannot do anything for him. La yujzi waladun an waladih wa la mawludun huwa jazan an waladihi shay'a. No one can help another person if he doesn't have the basic requirements. Inna ba'da Allahi haqq. The promise of Allah is true. Wa as'aluka al-aman yawma la yanfa'u al-zalimina ma'adiratuhum wa lahumu al-la'natu wa lahum su'u al-dar. I ask you also protection for the day that those who have done bad, those who have been unjust, they would not take any benefit from asking for forgiveness by saying, you know, please accept my apologies. This is not useful. Bringing excuses is not useful. Because they don't have any justified reason. لا ينفع الظالمين معذرتهم Their apologies don't work. وَلَهُمْ سُوءُ الدَّارِ And they have very bad place for rest. وَأَسْأَلُكَ الْأَمَانِ يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلَّهِ These are all references to the Quran. I ask protection for the day that no one owns something for another person. No one can do anything for another person. Everything is in the hand of Allah. And something very worrying. أَسْأَلُكَ الْأَمَانِ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ The day that people run away from their brothers, from their mother, from their father, from their husband or wife, from their children, they run away. Because they have so much to deal with, they don't want to get any burden from another person. They don't have even time to listen. Of course, this is for the criminal, not for many for pious people. Pious people would have love for each other. But the people who are in difficulty, they run away from each other. 
You see, this happens in dunya between the people who are attached to dunya. That when you have a need for help, they run away from you. They don't want to listen to you. They don't want to help you. They say, you know, we have enough problems. When everything is fine with you, they come. But when you have difficulties, they disappear. The same thing is in Akhirah. Because everyone has difficulty, they want to run away. Everyone would have something that makes him completely busy. And something even worse than running away. Not only they run away, it reached the point that they want to take others and say, take this and release me. They would sacrifice others and make others ransom for themselves. Like animals. You know, I heard there was an, uh, you know, many years ago, a kind of experiment. They wanted to see how much a monkey loves, you know, her children. So there was a monkey mother, a monkey child. They put them on a plate and they couldn't go anywhere. It was surrounded. They started hitting the plate from the, you know, underground. So when it was getting very warm, the mother started holding her baby. She didn't want to, uh, the baby to suffer. So she was difficult, you know, she was, you know, uh, moving and changing, you know, raising one foot, putting another foot. Then it became very hot. Then she put the baby and jumped on the baby. There is a limit. When people act according to the instincts, things can go all right, but provided that they don't reach the level that they can tolerate. If it reaches the level that is beyond their tolerance, then become animals. Even human beings happen. If in society everything is okay, they have job, they have, you know, good money, everything is all right. Everyone is, you know, acting like civilized people. But if for a few days there is drought, then you see these civilized people attack each other. They kill each other. We have to achieve something extra. Just instincts are not enough. Every mother by instinct loves her children. Every father does that. But if this is not supported by Iman, if we are not true human beings, then when we are in very difficult situation, then we sacrifice our children for our own comfort, or we sacrifice our parents for our own comfort. We already see people are doing this. In Akhirah, it becomes much worse. We have to equip ourselves with Iman. When there is Iman, they never sacrifice other people for their own sake. Yawma yavaddul mujrim law yaftadi. Feda means like ransom, like redemption. Min adab yawma idhin bibani. He wants to sacrifice his children. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ His wife, أَخِي His brother, وَفَسِيلَتِهِ All his tribe. He said, take all my tribe and just release me. وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضَ جَمِيعًا Take all six billion people, for example, who nowadays seven billion people live. Take all of them, please don't come after me. Because he knows what is going to happen. But this is not working. You must yourself be going through the pain of fire, which 
burns. But a burning which doesn't stop. In dunya, if you are burnt, then it's finished. Maybe five minutes, ten minutes, one hour, when it's finished. But in Akhirah, when you are burnt, then new skin comes. Again you are burnt. And also you are burnt from inside. This is because of all the bad things that we have done with our organs, with our heart, with our mind. So, this is a day which is worrying Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. So, this is end of the first part of Munajat. Then the second part starts talking about his relation with his master. Mawlaya ya Mawlai. Anta al-Mawla wa ana al-Abd. My master, my master. I acknowledge that you are my master. I am your servant. وَحَلْ يَرْحَمُ الْعَبْدَ إِلَّا الْمَوْلَى Is there anyone who can be kind and merciful to a servant other than his master? Can I expect other servants to help me? No, they have nothing. Can I ask masters of other people help me? No. My own master should help me. I don't have anyone else. There is no solution. You cannot ask me to go somewhere else. Sometimes you go to someone for help. He refers you to another person. Either for good reason or for bad reason. Sometimes he says another person is more knowledgeable. Ask him for help. Sometimes he doesn't want to spend time or money. He says go to another person. But there is no one else. Allah cannot refer us to anyone else. هَلْ يَرْحَمُ الْعَبْدَ إِلَّا الْمَوْلَى مَوْلَايَ يَا مَوْلَايَ أَنْتَ الْمَالِكُ وَأَنَا الْمَمْلُوكِ You are the owner and I am owned by you. Who is there to have mercy on the owned, on the slave other than the owner? And then he brings all the qualities of Allah and us as his servant. And tell Aziz wa Anazalil, you have honor and dignity. We don't have anything. You are creator, we are created. You are great, we are little. You are strong, we are weak. You are rich, we are poor. You are the giver, we are the beggar. You are the living, we are mortal. You are everlasting, we are expiring and perishing. You are endurable and we are expiring. You are the sustainer and we are the receiver of sustenance. You are generous and we are miserly. You are the one who has no trouble, no difficulty, no illness. And we are the one who is always in difficulties. You are great, we are small. You are guide, we are misguided. You are the most merciful. We are in need of mercy. You are Sultan, means who have full authority and sovereignty. And we are tried and tested. You are guide and we are perplexed. You are forgiving and we are sinful. You overcome everything and we are defeated. You are Lord and we are under your Lordship. You have all the honor and high position, and we are humble. After saying all these qualities, then Imam says, this is the third section, Mawlaya ya Mawlai, irhamni birahmatik. This is the key. There is no one to have mercy on me. Why should you have mercy? Because you are merciful. Your mercy make it necessary for you to be helpful. Because you yourself have said in the Quran that you have made mercy necessary for yourself. In Surah An'am, 
Twice Allah says, Kataba Rabbukum ala nafsi rahma or Kataba ala nafsi rahma. Once with Rabbukum, once without. He has made it necessary for himself to be merciful. So, in the first section we say, there is such a very big, devastating future waiting for us. In the second we say, there is no one to help me. You are the only one who can have mercy on me. And in the third section, which is the final stage, we say, you have rahma, you have generosity, so please help me. مولاي يا مولاي ارحمني برحمتك Because of your rahma, not because I have done something I don't deserve, I don't, uh, you know, demand by forcing you or, you know, expecting you are merciful, you are kind. So please have mercy on me. Please be satisfied with me. There are two ways to satisfy someone. Sometimes you satisfy someone because you meet his expectations. You do a very good job. So he is pleased with you. Sometimes you satisfy people not because you have done a very good job. Because they are very kind. Very nice. So you do a little, they are satisfied. When a little child takes one plate from dining room to kitchen, you are satisfied. MashaAllah. Everyone should clap that he has taken one plate to the kitchen. Has not broken that plate. Allah with us is like this. He is Sari or Raza. You do a little good, he would ask everyone to clap for you. But if na'uzu billah, we do mischief, if we put on a fire on the house, then no one would be pleased with you. You know the story of that person that was dying and he had difficulty and if I am not mistaken, he was not able to recite Shahadatain because his mother was not happy with him. So his mother was asked to come and she came and said, now I am forgiving. Still she was not able, sorry, he was not able to say Shahadatain. Then Rasulullah told him to say these words. Ya man yaqbalul yaseer wa ya'fu anil kathir. O the one who accepts little things and forgive great sins. Yaqbalul yaseer. Little things he accepts. Great sins he forgives. Iqbal min al yaseer. Wa'fu anil kathir. So please accept my little good thing and forgive my great sins. When he said this, then he was able to say shahadatain, and he passed away with iman. So Allah is sari or raza. If I am telling you, you know, with hope, but also worry. If we are not able to satisfy Allah, to please, please Allah, it means that we are really useless. Someone who cannot please Allah... It means that he is really wicked. There must be a problem. He is a person who is fighting Allah. A person who is deliberately doing mischief. If you are a mu'min, a pious person, Allah doesn't expect you to be like Amirul Mu'mineen. doesn't expect you to be like Rasulullah, like Imam Sajjad. But honestly do your best. Do your best. Allah will be pleased with you. So, anni bijudika wa karamek because of your generosity, because of your honor. You are a gentleman. You like you know a person who is gentleman, very honorable. He is very soft. Allah. 
به جود که و کرمک و فضلک فضل means grace favor so because of your jud your generosity your karam again means generosity your honor and فضل means favor or grace یا ذل جود و الاحسان و تاول و الامتنان oh the one who is generous who is benevolent and benefactor who gives who obliges by giving too much. So we start with mentioning our worries, but we end with hope because he is Arhamur Rahimin. He is the most merciful of the merciful. So if we rely on Allah's mercy, and don't do something which contradicts this. Then, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would save us from those dangers and those fears of the day of judgment, which is beyond anyone's tolerance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us among his best servants. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to serve him with all the energy and all the talents and all the skills that we have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our children generation by generation always on the right path. May Allah protect us and our community from anything which is bad and dislike. May Allah bring unity and love and brotherhood to our community. May Allah bring peace and prosperity to the people of the world by coming of Imam Zaman, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif. May Allah make him very happy with us. May our Imam be satisfied with our performance. May Allah give shifa to all the people who are ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his rahmah to all mu'mineen who have passed away, especially those who have rights upon us, our parents, for parents, our teachers, our ulama. May Allah let them be with Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين